Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're getting into some more interesting, more challenging things when it relates to sequences in series. So here what we're going to do is find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. That could also of course apply to an arithmetic series. So here we have a sequence of five numbers, 1, 4, 7, 10, and 13, and we first always need to find what we call the common difference. If it's an arithmetic series or sequence, the difference between all the terms will be exactly the same. That difference is called a common difference. Common means it's the same and difference is difference. So let's do that on this particular example. To do that, we take the end term and subtract the n minus 1 term. So in this case, if we let a sub 2, we let n equals 2, then we get a sub n minus 1, which is 1. In this case, that would be 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. If we do a sub 3 minus a sub 2, that's equal to 7 minus 4, which is 3. And a sub 5 minus a sub 4, that is equal to 13 minus 10, which is equal to 3. So it doesn't matter which two you pick, if they're consecutive terms, the difference will be the common difference. In this case, it's equal to 3. So notice that we can always find the common difference when we're dealing with an arithmetic sequence. Now we're going to do this in general, the general approach. So a sub 1 is simply a sub 1. Now a sub 2 Oop, sub 2, I say 2 and I write 1, sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 plus the common difference, because it simply be d more than a sub 1. If we now take a sub 3, that is equal to a sub 2 plus the common difference, but a sub 2 was equal to this, so this is going to be a sub 1 plus d plus d, or that's going to be equal to a sub 1 plus 2d. If we now find the next term, a sub 4, that's equal to a sub 3 plus the common difference. a sub 3 is equal to this. That's equal to a sub 1 plus 2d plus d, which means that it's equal to a sub 1 plus 3d. And I think you're beginning to see the pattern. If we now look for a sub 5, that is going to be equal to a sub 1 plus 4d. And if we'd want to do it in a general term, instead of writing a sub 5 equals a1 plus 4d, what if it's a sub n? Well, then we need to write this a little bit differently. We can write this as a sub 5 is equal to a sub 1 plus 5 minus 1d, because I want to have a, an equivalent number here, because 4 is 5 minus 1, 3 is 4 minus 1, 2 is 3 minus 1, and 1 is 2 minus 1. So I can write it like this. But then instead of writing 5, because in this case that would be the fifth term in my sequence, I can write it in general for any term. So what I can do is I can replace every 5 by n, and I can write that a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus the quantity n minus 1 times d. And that is how we find the nth term, any term, in an arithmetic series. Of course, it must be an arithmetic series because we have to have that common difference, and then this is how we find any term in that sequence or in that series. Oh, by the way, you know what? Why don't we do an example? Let's pick our sequence there, and let's say that I want to find the fourth term. I want to find a sub 4, that's going to be a sub 1, which is 1, plus 4 minus 1, 4 minus 1, times the common difference, which we found to be 3. So that means that this is 1 plus 3 times 3, which is equal to 1 plus 9, which is equal to 10. And of course, when we look at the fourth term, it is indeed 10, a sub 4. And you can see that the equation does indeed work, at least in that example. And that is how it's done. Well, you want to do summation then. Well, in this case, we cannot use the summation because we're looking for only one term. And that's the term, and that's how we write it. So it's it's one equation. So remember, in this case, we're not looking for the sum, we're looking for the end term. Right. So, and we'll see some other equations on how to calculate the whole summation in general as well. But that's how this is done. If you do a summation, that'll be an actual example. <laughs> Coming up. <laughs> 